Today, we are doing a full shop tour for you, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> we should probably start outside, or like at the front. At the start. At the start. At the start of the tour. It's not as exciting out here as it's time It's of not, year, is it? No. Because okay. it it's, it's closed. It's cut. So this is usually. No, let's start properly. <laughs> Welcome to Maidenhead Aquatics. Here is Matt, fish shop Matt. Pop. Uh, I was just pointing. I like that. That's yeah, nice. Yeah. 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 So usually this is the whole pond section and there's like three or four of those in there, Matt? Four, yeah, four. And then there's plants on the floor and there's but, yeah, pond this plants whole, everywhere. This whole place is like ponded right up. Yeah. Uh, it's not the season, obviously. No, are these the, the, the last of the ponds? This is it, the last of the plants, unfortunately. They're... Oh, that's why there's 50% off because yeah. they're, they're on their way out, but yeah. they will still they'll plant come and come back year, for next yeah. year. Yeah, 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 they'll come back. That's a yeah. hell of a bargain then, actually. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, it's just a, a long-term investment though, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. They won't look great for the next two, three months. But, you know. <laughs> and look, yes, massive delivery of <laughs> fluval, fluval siennas. You've had to order so many, haven't you, because you know they're going to be gone. Oh, they are selling really well. So yeah, I've just like, uh, that's why they're out here because I haven't got time to put them in the storeroom to then bring them back. It's just pointless. Because they're so. going to be sold before. If yeah. you want a fluval for sienna, get down here quick these are so cool they're going to be in the tour in a minute because we've got one of the tanks yes, we've already we escaped yeah yeah um, but yeah okay walk on matt because uh Where i've got going? a feeling this video is gonna be a long one <laughs> yeah i don't know why i did that voice <laughs> oh hang on hang on show these because i love these are uh, the new opties yeah so we've just got the different ones in actually so this these is are aqua cool. one yeah yeah aqua one tanks so they're they do a tall and a shallow which is really cool yeah, yeah i'm really liking them yeah, so we've got a shallow tank we've recently done as well. Yeah. That's going to be in a tour, and that we use one of these for that. So um, Maybe yeah, we really need cool. To do a tour at some point. Yeah, I know. I, well, look, what with this whole energy thing, people are going to be into more nano tanks for a bit, aren't they? If they oh, haven't yeah, I would already. Have so, yeah. Saying that, <laughs> CN is massive, and everyone's buying yeah. those. But so. then, to be fair, when you look at the energy consumption of most tanks, it's not a lot, is it? No, it's not. Like it's like. Uh, most of the medium-sized tanks. It's like buying a coffee once a week. And, <laughs> you know, if you don't buy a coffee from a whoever, <laughs> um, yeah, you can you can afford to run your tank. So what would you rather have? Have a tank at home that you can enjoy 10 hours a day or whatever, yeah. or a coffee that's five minutes long? You, you make a good point. <laughs> so over here are all of the sort of bigger fish vats or yeah. outdoor fish, I guess. Yeah, yeah, all the pond fish pond stay fish. out here. So, yeah, normally this system's full of koi, that system's full of goldfish, but at this time of year, that one's shut down. So we've only got the one left running at this time of year. Okay, so do, how, how do they go? Is it like, is it size? Yeah, normally. So we normally have our bigger boys in this end, um, oh, obviously gorgeous. in the larger vats as well. Yeah. And then, yeah, you've got, as it goes down, it gets smaller and smaller. Cheryl was just selling one out of here this morning, so. So people are still buying this time of year? Yeah, it's still, it just depends on the temperature, to be fair. At the moment, it's still really mild. So, yeah, it is, isn't it? You know, they're still feeding, they're still up and about, they're still okay. Once I don't, I don't know colder. anything about koi, Matt. So yeah. in, over the next months, well, do, you, do you have to take them inside? Well, no, 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 not at all. So you'd leave them outside, but you just need to make sure you change their diet and change, yeah, well, change for, their For what feed, reason? Really. Just because they everything slows down? Yeah, so their metabolism and their digestive system all slows down. So you just change their food that they're on um, and then they'll go through the winter. They might not even feed depending on how cold it gets. Right. They might just completely stop feeding, it, like, yeah, completely. So, Interesting. Yeah, it does vary, but yeah, it's just keeping an eye on your individual fish. <laughs> Listen to me, do you bring them inside? Side. What? <laughs> Set up a little. Everyone's yeah, got cool. little ponds in their gut yeah, house, just, have just they? A little swimming pool. Yeah. That's all it is. Just a little paddling pool in the conservatory. Well, not, not one of these. No. <laughs> look no. at this. Look at this beast. Oh, the the uh, water lettuce seems to be surviving. Just about. It's just hanging on. Once the temperature drops a little bit more, it will start going over. Look at these monsters. Whoa. <laughs> these are Whoa, our boys. They're so friendly, aren't they? You yeah. can stroke them. Well, I can't because of the slime coat. But I mean, if you if you could, you. You could. Yeah, they are like dogs. <laughs> they are, aren't they? <laughs> They're lovely. They're not scared at all. No, no. He's been here for quite some time <laughs> now. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't bite me. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Okay, and then, yeah, more vats along the back. Yeah, we have loads more vats, but yeah, all empty, ready for the next spring. We've got to jet wash them all and clean them all. Fun. Yeah. Fun times. So then we come through the door and we are initially greeted by, boom, the eight foot that me and Matt did. When did we do this, Matt? <laughs> That was May, so June, maybe June, July. June, time? due for a rescape. Yeah. No, <laughs> I think we'll give that one a bit longer. Yeah, I think that one, that one was, um, that one was an epic journey. That one. Oh yes. <laughs> so if you want to see the build video for this, it's like I think it's like 
two hours long or something. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I think we'd done it over three episodes, didn't we? Three or four, something yeah. like that. But it, it, yeah, it required that. Um, so it's basically a ton of these absolutely awesome Congo Tetras. Um, you, you know, you're the fish man, you're, you're better with pronunciations and everything, so... <laughs> so yeah, you've got, the, you've got all the Congo Tetras in here, males and females, so you can see the males are the sort of bluey gold ones, with the longer fin extensions, and then the females are the more sort of silvery ones. You've got long fin Delestes Tetra, which are the big boys in the back with the black bar on them. They sort of blend in with the Congo Tetras quite a lot, and they sort of show with them. We've got the Bard Barbs. Oh, so down in here, the little African Oh my barbs. goodness, Matt. They've got they're, chunky. They are way bigger than I remember. Yeah, yeah, they I, are growing up I mean, really well. Not that I'm not here all the time. But no. <laughs> but yeah, it, I didn't notice it's that. It's one of those things, when you don't look at them for a little while, they do, they do sort of strike you now that they've got a lot bigger. They have. Um, mm. Whilst he's out, quick, yep. quick, tell me what this snake is. That's, that's Mr. Ropefish, that is. That's Mr. Ropey 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 <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, we've got three reed fish or rope fish, depending on how you want to call them. There you go, for size, guys. Yeah, they're getting chunky. They're, um, they're so cool. We didn't see them a lot to start with, did we? Yeah. But every time I come in now, they're all over the front Oh, yeah, glass. they're confident as anything. Now they're always out. So you've got the two of them there, and then the third one... Is oh, probably, yeah, I didn't see... Yeah, there's another one behind them. <laughs> look at their faces. They're so cute. They are great. I really like them. Everyone thinks they look like dragons. That's I what, guess so. Yeah, that's what everyone's been saying when they walk in at the moment. They're like, oh, they're little dragons. And I can see it now. The way that they move through the water, they do look like some of those sort they're of mythical like, dragons. more like a Disney dragon. Whereas like, the arowana is more like, a, I'm going to destroy you, <laughs> Smeagol, yeah. uh, Smoog, 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 Smoog. Yeah. Is, that, is that right? Well, Smaug. Smaug, Smaug, yeah. Smaug, yeah. yeah. More the, like a The big of, red dude from Hobbit. <laughs> the scary ones. Yeah. But yeah. those are, yeah, these are far more like, look at him. Look. Disney dragon. Disney dragon. <laughs> um, yeah. And, and then, then we've we got your Crebensis as well. Got Michael Ben, yes, there we go. They've been growing up well. So you've got a female and a couple of males down here. Awesome. Looking really good. Whoa, look at her. She's ready for ready for breeding. Yeah. She's good stock. Yeah, they are. They do look nice now. They've coloured up really well. Really, really well. And then the jewel cichlids as well, yeah? Yeah, you've got the jewels. So you've got the Takana jewels. Nice one up in the Anubius there. What's he doing up there? Is he looking for something? Yeah, like? trying to find something to eat, I reckon. <laughs> and um, then, oh, and then the Barbie cats, the three striped glass cats. Oh, yes, yeah, of course. Look at that. They're, again, growing up, a lot more sort of um, defi definite bars nowadays. Yeah. They were a little more milky back in the, back in the day with they first They were, women. yeah. They didn't colour up, or they weren't as coloured up. There's still a couple that are still not perfectly coloured up. But yeah, they're looking really good. And they just had a different shape and a different shoaling sort of style, I suppose, to yeah. the tank. Uh, we should note that um, there's some decent filtration on this whole tank, because yeah. there's a lot of fish in there. Um, but we wanted to make sure we've got a massive substrate to start with, haven't we? Yeah. Which doesn't look like it too much from the front or the side. No, but as you've you go got the trim. Yeah, the trim as well. Oh yeah, so you've got a whole inch down underneath that, haven't you? Yeah. But also, what I did when I'm well, what we did when we made it was um, you see how it's down low there. It actually tapers up into a mound at the back and then tapers down the other side. So we just got loads of substrate, but harboring all that beneficial bacteria. And then inside, two FX6s. No, I show them. Oh, you want me to show them? Just because it's quite a cool little... I haven't got a what, key on me. What you guys did was quite cool. Was it? So Martin, who's not in today, I thought he was in today. No, back tomorrow. He's been on holiday messing with his pond for two yeah, weeks. Yeah, everyone's asking me, when's the part two of the pond? I'm like, it's not going to... It's not a quick thing. <laughs> no, that is, that is not a quick thing. That is not a quick thing. But yeah, so I wanted you to... Because people know what an FX6 is. Well, most people do, but... Um, they might not. They might not, actually. So yeah, look at this. So Martin knocked up a trolley on wheels. So all you've got to do is unplug the pipes and just wheel it out. I'd probably unplug the pump first as well. Yeah? Yeah, not just the pipes. That'd be a bit messy. <laughs> oh, you, oh, the power. Yeah, sorry, turn the yeah. power off. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. I thought you meant like actually like pull the whole pump off. No. <laughs> Don't try and be smart with me. No, sorry. All right? sorry. I look stupid enough half the time anyway without you adding to it. <laughs> yeah, without you pointing at it. But no, it is really good. when he's stupid. Yeah. <laughs> we did clean one yesterday, to be fair. Oh, we, did um, yeah, we... Saturday, was it? Did you do it, Cheryl? No, I didn't. No, yeah, we <laughs> no I don't clean. <laughs> it wasn't too bad, to be fair. It was all right. It was still, it was still running, but we just thought, you know, we'd better check it and see what's going on What was it. it like inside? Completely clear? Uh, not completely clear, no. It was quite muddy and mucky, but yeah. Nothing. So it's doing its job. It was still running, yeah. How long's that been? It's, that's the first time? Properly? Yeah. No, that's fine. I mean, yeah. look, if you yeah, showed no, that it was all right, Yeah, then... to be fair, they, um, we've it been shows just how monitoring good the, the flow, is. and we've been, we test weekly in here anyway. You monitoring what? 
the flow. What time is she in? Hey, there it is. Uh, in a every bit. video, every video. <laughs> uh, we need to find some other names that we can work into it. Yeah, we do really. Yeah, we need to. Yeah, I'm going to try and I'll try and work some out. <laughs> but yeah, um, we've just been monitoring the flow, monitoring the water quality. But with all the vallis growing, um, that's been sapping up all the nutrients. So yeah. there's not really been any need to majorly clean them out. But we just sort of got to the point where we were like, we probably should just open one and check what's going on yeah. in there. Yeah. But yeah, it was, it was good. So we'll do the other one probably maybe the end of this week, start of next, just so that each one gets time to recover. Um, yeah, yeah, doing both might be a big, big hit for the system, wouldn't it? In exactly. terms of like, yeah, this is it. It might, you know, you won't biology. lose a lot of bacteria, but you'll lose a bit. So yeah. it's well worth, um, yeah, Split splitting it. them up and doing one at a time. And before people ask that don't know, how do you gravel vac down that? I ne we don't gravel vac tanks for planted tanks. Sorry, no. You, you need to with like your heavy fed cichlids and yeah, things exactly. like that. Yeah, exactly. You know, if you wanted to, you could go along the front, I suppose, and just do any areas that aren't majorly planted, but. You know, if you've got the right amount of flow and filtration and, yeah, you're not overfeeding your tank, then in theory, there's not really any need to. But then I find it with sand, and depending on whether you run sand or gravel, obviously gravel, you get all those big lumps sticking together and the food gets in amongst yeah, it. Yeah. Whereas on sand, sits most on the of the surface. food or the fish waste sits on top and eventually gets picked up by the filter. Yeah. So you don't have a lot going into the, yeah, substrate really. Because, yeah, we've got flow coming from one side just get so, yeah. and it's all the fish as well swimming and picking at the bottom. It's just going to lift it, and then there's the, the, out, the outlets on this side. You've got, oh, yeah, we've got one in the middle and one, oh, one on the one in the middle end. as well, yeah? Yeah. Perfect. Oh, and you've got that 16,000 litre pump as well that we put on the end. Oh, yeah. So yeah, that's so. the one that's making the crinum wave in the water. That's the 16,000 litre pump. Yeah, we go. There it is. What make was that pump? Uh, TMC. So TMC. it's one of the TMC reef flows or something like that. Yeah, yeah cool. Well, a quick note on lighting, because we spent 10 minutes on this tank already. Yeah. <laughs> but it is the biggest tank, so. It is, yeah. Um, we've got well, it's a not, fluval... but you won't escape the other one, so. Oh, no, 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 we are, <laughs> we are, we are. We're going to do the Stingray tank, but just that's a bit, we need a lot of planning. Um, yeah, it is. Uh, we were looking at it a couple of weeks ago, and it is a lot of planning. We need to do it, though, for yeah, sure. Yeah, it'll be cool. So we've got a Kessel, what Kessel is it? Uh, the 160, 160s. or the 180s now, I can't remember now. One of those. Yeah, it's the smaller one. Um, yeah. They do a 360, and that's the smaller one, which, yeah, 160 or 180. And we found that when we put the two up, there was just a little bit of a dark spot in the middle. So we added the TMC... Reef Photon. Reef Photon. So it's actually a reef light, but yeah. you can change the spectrum to be almost the same look. Yeah. It's very, very similar. When you look in the tank, it looks exactly the same. Yeah. So yeah, that's all good on the light that on that one. That one's running at 50% power at the moment as well. Because I turned it Is down it? on the weekend. So yeah. that's a mega light, yeah. basically. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you've not been in it much yet. I've not even been in it, but it's okay, it's not about me, it's about you and your shop. Of course. I'm just gonna say, everyone says who comes here that this tank is so much bigger in real life than the camera can show you. The camera does a weird sort of squishy thingy. Um, but yeah, so if you live no local to us, or not local, like everyone travels a few hours, don't they? Oh yeah, yeah, people <laughs> have been traveling a little ways to get here now. So definitely come down and see all the tanks, buy something. Um, why not? It's got hard. We'll, we'll get onto that, but yeah. Shall I lie down, down in front of it to show yeah, you the length yeah, of it? Yeah, yeah, lie down in front of it. Shall I? Right, there you go. You weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm under six foot. Yeah, so you're six. You're, cir you're circus six, aren't you? Yeah. So it's quite long. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> That's not eight foot. So yeah. many people say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah cool. it definitely is. Love it. <laughs> So just as you come into the door as well, you've got this section on the right, haven't you, Matt? Yep. What is this section? This is all our indoor aquarium goods. <laughs> Air pumps, heaters. You look like you're in a jungle. <laughs> <laughs> a little pot plant. We'll get to this tank in a minute, but you know, we'll just do some goods first. Yeah, it's just, you know, air pumps, heaters, light units. Down here looks, treatments. seems to be the fluval section. Yeah, all the fluval goods. Nice. Oh, oh the new FX too. Yes, yeah. That's yeah, a that. cool new filter which you've done a review of just on your channel. Yes, so yeah, I did. It's I'll a... link that Thanks. somewhere. <laughs> yeah, it's a good filter to be fair. Powerful. Yeah? Yeah, really powerful. Well, that's what you want. Well, yeah, that's it. It picks up a lot of the muck. Good. Turns it over. But yeah, um, obviously oh, it's... Light units. Yep, all the LEDs. That's sort of amazing um, uh, light, that one, the fluval plant. Yeah. 3.0? 2.0. 3.0. 3.0 now, yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. the newest generation. So yeah, yeah, really good. Um, but yeah, it's obviously just after a weekend, so we've sold lots of stuff, so there's lots of gaps, but yeah. Uh, chemicals. All the, all the chemicals, all the foods. All the foods. Good selection. Um, 
sand waterfalls. Yeah, um, this is my favourite section, as I'm sure you <laughs> you'll all know why. So, but yeah, some people like it, don't they? In the day, it's a pretty cool ship you've got there. I think you could do a cool one with Easter Island heads. Big mossy. That is true. Big mossy hills. Other people then... have done this though. And oh, if have you, they? Yeah. So then oh, you get. I don't look around. You're not allowed. You're not allowed to do it again. Oh no. No. no you're copying no, no, someone you're copying then. You've you well, got to come up with the original them, ideas. You give them credit. I think it's all right. But still, I mean, that's very specific, isn't it? Stonehenge. Maybe we could. Stonehenge go has been done. There's 1.7 million views or two million views now. It's all on been some, done. It's all been done. Let's just start redoing it. So, yeah. Well, you've got to at some point. Yeah. It's like music, isn't it? Pretty all much. the sounds have been taken. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. You'll never. You'll never get something original now what could i do with that um <laughs> burn it no <laughs> <laughs> no um i don't know that would be trickier well, i think for me the life size or not life size obviously that's a little bit smaller than life size <laughs> my, but my head's pretty small it's close yeah i reckon we could give it a go um <laughs> but the ones that are closer to life size make more sense to me yeah like i, I, I don't yeah, know yeah. when you've got a shipwreck this big and then there's neon swimming around Oh, you want a tank with a real shipwreck, do yeah, you? Yeah, I, I quite like... They done, used to do an anchor that was like a real size, size. anchor. That's quite cool, yeah, good yeah, idea. Yeah, so that looks quite good. But yeah, it's each to their own, isn't it, at the end of the day? Do you know what? It's almost like, we'll get to it, but over at the Stingray tank, if you could have like a rowboat coming out the top, like Ooh. a broken rowboat. No, do you know what we need? You know those little tanks that people do with the little floating hut with the wooden poles that go down in? You know the ones I mean? Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, so it looks like a little platform and a little house on the back on of a river. Yeah, yeah. We could do a real house on the back of the thing. You just want to do a diorama, don't you? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, and pretty then much. you want to put Warhammer <laughs> figures all over it. And... <laughs> no, I ain't got time for that anymore. No, you don't, you no, don't. No, no. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, gravels. Down this section, we've got all the gravels, which I can see loads yeah. have been, been sold oh, out of. Yeah. Christ, that was pretty much full last week. It was, yeah. And then this awesome gravel. This is one of my favourites. Shall we just as a lol? Do a full tank set. I think it could be interesting to do some form of like, just yeah, <laughs> just try and challenge yourself. That hasn't I just been said done. It. <laughs> that hasn't been done. Neon pink gravel with Busa Philandra <laughs> hasn't been done. True. And those. Not and those. those. Fans. Yes. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> that and that with Boos. Yeah. I'm, I'm ready. Let's do it. And some shrimp. Should we not do the shop tour and we'll just do that today? Yeah, exactly. Cancel the shop tour. And then we've got the fake plant section. Not yep. everyone's into real plants like me. Some no. people cannot be bothered with that. Yep. And there's some good ones here, to be fair. This is when I very first got my tank, yep. I did the fake plant thing, yep. like most people do. Uh, and these were the sort of ones I bought. I, yep. always, was, I was always more attracted to the, the realistic y style ones. Yeah, you absolutely. Know? Um, you it know, can work really well, like that one. Yeah, that looks great, to be fair. They are, and to be fair, if you get the right ones and you make a nice display of it, well, you know, we've got dry run displays in the shop that look really good with plastic. It just depends, you know. It's probably more work. It's more work for people. That's why I don't yeah, understand. They have to, they're expensive yeah. for what they are. Yeah, that's Do you it. know what I mean? They're but not expensive. They don't, get, don't get wrong, they're not expensive. No. They're expensive for what they are. Yeah, this is it. But they last forever, so it's a bit of a, like... Yeah, it's yeah, whatever you're, it's what, it's this what you're it. into. I mean, yeah. not every fish is going to be able to have a planted tank either, is it? So. No, that's it. You know, we've got a lot of customers with, yeah, big cichlids and silver dollars and things like that that will just eat, well, they eat the plastic plants, let alone anything else. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, let's come back over here to this tank, though. Oh, yeah, we'll go back to the start. So this is actually the first tank that me and Matt set up together. Yeah. Um, just, yeah, completely, actually. Yeah, it was. But also the first one in this, in this shop. Yeah. Now, there are fish in here. Um, <laughs> what back we've in done May, is... I think it was, wasn't it? Yeah, oh, yeah that we've created such a uh, realistic environment for these fish that they like to stay in the dark areas all the time. Yeah. Now, you can see them dotted about a bit. They're coming around. So we've got 150 green neon tetras, a million shrimp nowadays as well. Yeah. Um, just, they are cherry shrimp, but they're like more, more closer to their wild form. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Loads of Amanos. The rummy noses are in there. Oh, yeah, rummy the noses. The pair of pistos are still in there as well. They come out every now and again. The bristle nose of bread in here. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember you um, showed me before. I haven't seen any babies for a couple of days, but they're obviously, again, planting. Yeah, exactly. Um, you can't always see oh, them. Oh, look at that, look at that Amano just ready to burst with eggs. Yeah, it is really chunky. So yeah, this tank is doing fantastic, but it's just, it's at that point now where it's trim, leave, trim, leave. Yep. It's done, it looks lovely, don't the, get me wrong. The limno has worked its way to the front now though. Yep. So that was only a little cluster right, back, back in section. there. And that has literally, it's going on runners and just literally popping up out the gravel. There you go, you can see it there, look. It looks beautiful. It's amazing, I really like it. But 
we wanted to do something different. This is going to be the first one that we redo in the shop. At the end yep. of the day, it's a display. We want people to come back regularly yeah. to look at new displays, a bit like a shop window in. Exactly, yeah, you know. this is it. You know, when we first set this one up, everyone walked through the door, looked at it, stood here for 10, 15 minutes, watching what was going on with it. Now everyone's seen it, they walk past it, it's, yeah. Yeah, we want to do new stuff. It's had um, its day. But just in case everyone's wondering, because this plant growth is absolutely great, flip the lid for me, Matt. This has got the Fluval Plant 3.0 in there. We put it on some little risers, so you can still use the slider inside the tank. Yeah. So that's why it looks so good, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, plus, we put a good amount of nutrients in bags underneath the soil, uh, the sand, sorry. So it's not just sand underneath there. Underneath it's like aqua soil in bags, just a little trick I do quite often, and that keeps the aqua soil locked down, yep. but it also still provides the nutrients and the water parameters as well. It keeps good, stable water parameters. Yep. This is it, it does it, it helps you in many, many different ways, to be honest. Oh, filtration, what, what did we Ooh. go for, Matt? We went... Oh, was it? A was a Biomaster, I think it was a... Well, That's a 350, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, I think it is a 350, yeah, because yeah. the 600 was, I think, was a slight bit too tall to get in the cabinet. So it's got its own heater in it, pre-filter in it. Exactly. Uh, decent amount of flow, more than what you need anyway, so, yeah, that's that one. Yeah, they've been great. No jump. <laughs> <laughs> I'll so, fall over. <laughs> we are now on... Oh, checking my mic. Yeah, we're all good. And we're me? all good. Mine, uh, mine, He's on. He's on. Mike's um, on. So we're now on to the first actual sellable fish <laughs> of the fish shop tour, yeah. 20 minutes in or whatever. Yeah. Uh, there's so much going on though, isn't there? Yeah. So where, what, what's this section, Matt? So this first section with the sort of grey sand in it, that's all our Rift Valley cichlids. So you've got, yeah, Tanganyikans, like the little, um, those are daffodils. Wow. So they're um, a little bit more yellow than the brochard eye. Uh, fairy fairy cichlids, yeah. Um, and then, yeah, we've got... Hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh, sorry. Because I just want to say to the guys, yes. we're going to be doing a setup for the fairy cichlids. Yeah. Based on something we saw at Trop Aquaria, which looked to work, it worked so well. Yeah, it was we, really cool. That we want to try it in that tank there. So that's yeah. what we want to do. We just want to switch that one up. Different fish, different plants. That should be pretty cool, I think it? it'll be a cool oh, tank, yeah. I mean, even just for us. Yeah, a little <laughs> Tanganyikan hybrid tank, you know, yeah, exactly. planted, not planted, rock work. I think it'll be cool planted but with like a couple of big feature plants yeah. and then lots of rock work that's what we want to go for and you know it's going to showcase the fish a bit more and people are going to see what you can do with them other than just a load of rocks you know yeah. because typically that's what Tanganyikan yeah Tanganyikan they do just a lot of rock work sometimes Valles sometimes Anubias I suppose a bit like the African the eight foot that we just showed off it's a yeah. bit like that um, but yeah I think you know I think you can make it a bit more interesting yeah you don't have to stick to the exact no rules do you? Thing is, yeah, I mean this is a great example to be fair they've down been here. Bred in the cap they've been bred in captivity for so long now that sort of I don't know the rule has stuck with Tanganyikan but whereas a lot of the other fish that have been bred in captivity we don't worry about you know no, you we don't do, worry about do what we want. keeping a neon in a certain environment no. but whereas the Tanganyikans you're always trying to keep them in that sort of yeah the, I the don't purists know. will hate us yeah they will yeah. Yeah, an Amazon like sword that. with a Tanganyikan fish how dare you <gasps> oh yeah but it should be interesting so but yeah we've got loads of selections yeah we're we going to go with things. some of the uh, Julie de Chromis. Yeah, Julie de Chromis maybe. We've got some nice Shelleys. Um, more Julie de Chromis up there. There's some standard Brachardi or fairy cichlids in there. So yeah, I think there's a cool amount. And we have got more deliveries coming in depending on when we're doing it. Okay. Oh, to be fair, we've got Golden Oscillatus. They've not coloured up yet. That's a little shell dweller, but they go bright gold when they're older. Lelupi. Yeah, there's loads. Tons. Um, Sweet. And then you've got your Malawis, obviously, that go alongside them, which are the bigger thuggish versions of them really yeah everyone knows the Malawis yeah. I mean I've never kept them uh, maybe I will one day I yeah. don't know but um, they're a lovely fish but uh, I yeah I've kept them before they're a lovely fish but they are just a bit brutal it's um, a different kind to... of fish keeping isn't it yeah pretty much it's, yeah, it's, it's very different... different to what I do the oh, planted yeah. tank stand off let it do its thing exactly. it's a lot more intensive but for, for the people that do it more rewarding isn't yeah, it exactly they, yeah they you need to overstock that. them so that they don't kill each other essentially you need more fish in there if you were to put three or four in a tank, you'd probably just end up with one winner. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it's, um, it's a different way of fish keeping, but I do like them when they're kept right. They're, they are a nice fish. You need a good sized tank, don't you, Matt? Yeah, yeah. Four foot? I would say four foot minimum. You can get away with smaller. Like I've As seen they're them, growing? Yeah, this yeah, is it. Yeah. I've seen them done in a three foot, um, and I've seen them actually done really nicely in a three foot recently. Um, but you do need to be a little bit more on the ball. Whereas obviously the bigger tank you've got, the more space you've got. You know, if you don't pay attention to them all the time, they've yeah, you can get away with a little bit more aggression in there. Okay, cool. And then next to those guys? At the moment, it's our live bearers. So it's our platies and guppies. So the shop's going through a bit of a transition at the moment. Um, we're bringing all of our live bearers over to this side of the shop. 
the Africans will probably move around to the back of the shop um, and just it's just creating more space for us and more space for sort of the community fish that seem to be the popular ones at the moment. Yeah. You know, lots of people have got space for a, a 30, 40 centimetre cube. Uh, not as many people have space for a four foot Malawi tank, you know. So, uh, yeah, we're going to be messing around with the shop and moving around. But this is going to become our live bearer section in the next probably yeah few weeks, hopefully. But you know what happens? They get the, the you know, the five gallon tank they yep. get the live bearers yep. and then the forefoot comes that's it they yeah they just want on and on and on and it's just we've all done it we've all done it yeah yeah, yeah absolutely yeah. it's just the way it goes someone walks in and goes oh i like that and then before you know it they've gone boom yeah i want this the f uh, four foot f three and a half foot is it yeah it's, it's yeah three and a bit foot yeah three and a bit size. foot fluval sienna so this is the boxes out the front that matt's got loads of orders for yeah um because it's just pretty quality tank at the end of the day they are it? lush yeah, yeah it comes really it nice. comes with two fluval plant 3.0s um they're not the the they don't look the same but it's the same technology, technology in inside yeah, yeah. and yeah they've got the app controlled and everything it comes with the heater it comes with a filter as well fluval, fluval 407 yep um so it's, it's just all kitted out for the prices you can see up there if you're in the England, uh, sorry, UK. For the prices you can see up there if you're in the UK, an exchange rate for US is not far off. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, this is our tank that we set. When did we set this one up? Uh, this about a month? That long ago, yeah. But I reckon it's about a month old now. Must yeah. be. Still a bit of tint to the water because we used so much bogwood there. Yeah. We wanted to do a cool perspective thing. So everything's coming from that vanishing point behind the crypts, which are growing absolutely beautifully. Look at that. I've never seen the colours, like Balance, I've never seen it go that weird orangey burnt sort of colour. So yeah. it's really nice. It's the fluval plants. They're, they're very good for plants, surprisingly. Yeah. It's in the name. Yeah, that's it. But this is, how many did we put in? A hundred, didn't we? Yep. hundred puffer fish. Yeah. Um, but they are everywhere. They are everywhere now. And little, they were very, very small. And it looks like most of them now, no, there's a tiddler at the back Yeah, there's there. a few, still a few like little dinky ones, but the good majority of them have grown really well. They're so small, they're hard to focus on. Yeah. But they've done really well, because we were worried to start with, weren't we, that the glass fish, who've got quite trappy sort of mouths, yeah. would have a go at them. And when we put them in, off camera, because we weren't filming at that point, but yeah. the, uh, the, the glass fish started having a little bite. And each one of them had a little go, and the puffers were blowing up, going to the surface, and then they didn't try again. So that was perfect. Yeah, they didn't bother. Once they had a sort of go, they didn't. Re they realised that they couldn't do anything about it. Exactly. So we were, oh, look at that. Look at that drake fin, that male there. Oh, they're so lovely. Look at how good his colours are. Yeah, he's the, he's the boss, isn't he? Yeah. He is oh, definitely yeah. the boss. Yeah, so there's drake fin and barbs. Yep. There is, um, I'm sorry, your fish guy. Well, sorry, I, I, I was liking watching you struggle. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you've got the drape fin barbs, you've got the glass fish, and then we've got the glow light danios. Glow light, um, that's what which I was going to they, they live as a ball in that balance. They're yeah. really cool. They are, they're so weird. Um, the shoaling behaviour of them is completely different to everyone else. That's, and that's what we wanted, didn't we? Yeah. We wanted that difference. Oh, and we've got some, a uh, few bristle nose in there yeah, as well, just to keep clean up on the rocks and the wood. It is, exactly, yeah. And that moss is doing really well. So our idea was just to, fill in all the different cracks and things with Marimo balls and also then the moss as well. Could do a little trim, yep. but it's not too bad, is it? No, it's been trimmed. We, well, I've been in there pretty much every three or four days recently, just trimming it back and then replanting some of it in different areas and stuff. But Such yeah, it's nice, growing so nice. really well. Love it, mate. You've done really well with it this time. Well, I mean, just like all the ones we set up, is it fair to say you don't really have to do a lot to them after I've left, do you? No, not really at all. Yeah, it's just a few water changes. And, you, you know, we, put, we added the bristle noses about a week later because we were getting a bit of algae on the wood where the moss hadn't quite settled in and was growing yeah. over it. Um, and, yeah, it's, it's just little, little touches. Rather than, like, having to panic and do a big change because something's gone wrong, they're just little touches that you can keep going and the tank just plods along. And that's, that, and that's why I'm able to look after so many tanks is because I set them up in such a way and I have done for you guys so that they, they're evolving themselves. You just got to do a little bit every now and again. Even the hair grass right down here, which traditionally needs a fair bit of CO2, people would say. Yeah. All right, it's not going to grow as amazing as CO2, but the natural look of it, yeah. look at that. It, it looks, it looks I would, how I'd expect you to see it rather than a full-on carpet. This is it. That's the, that's the key, isn't it? At the end of the day, that is how it would be in the wild. It would be sort of growing in the areas that it can. It would be restric restricted to areas that it sort of can grow. Yeah. Um, and I like that. That's a nice little touch because it doesn't need to grow everywhere. 
I think hair grass is a detail plant. I don't think it's a carpet plant, personally, no. yeah, because yeah. once you trim it, it then looks a bit weird anyway. Yeah, it does. Because <laughs> yeah, you've got yeah. to square it off and wait for the new growth. Yeah. So you're always a you bit... You need some of those hairdresser, hairdresser scissors that like layers it, don't you? <laughs> That's what you need. Hair I wouldn't grass. know, mate. Hair grass I wouldn't know well, with no the Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's a cool tank. It's doing really well. So over this way, we have got a tank that me and Matt want to do at some point. We was a, we was a, did we allure? Allure? We did. allure? allure? Yeah, I think we've done this before. Yeah, allure, allure, allure is something provocative. I don't know. Anyway, let's not go there. No. That's have, after hours account, that is. I think we mentioned it earlier, yes. actually, about doing this. Did we? Was that this video? It's yeah, been so, so long. I think we said about it. I think I joked with you and said it's not our biggest tank, but you don't want to do the other one. <laughs> oh, yeah, because <laughs> it's going to be impossible. So look, here is a massive, I mean, what is it, Matt? What's the dimensions? Go uh, stand in front of it. Eight foot, oh, I can't remember now, eight foot, six foot, two foot. It's deep. Monster. It's deep, yeah. and it's got monster fish, so this is Buster. Yep. Make him do that splash splash thing, Matt, when he uh, thinks... He might not, because I've not got a bucket of food. I need a bucket of food. Oh, he's been fed and he knows. He's clever. He yeah. is clever. So oh, he's, yeah. he's always watching, clearly. <laughs> it's like having a dog in a fish tank. That's the only way I can describe it. And like when you go near the lead, they think it's walkies. If Pretty you bring much. a bucket past, he thinks feed time. It starts yep. going... Sm You've got to show it. Grab a fake bucket. I'll go and get a bucket. Well, you I'll could just feed goes... him. I mean... <laughs> yeah, I will feed him. I'll grab some food and see. <laughs> <laughs> right, Matt, <laughs> Matt's just... <laughs> Matt's just getting the food back there. He's going to come around the other way because that's the way he normally comes with it. There he goes. He's going that way with the bucket. And he's going to come around here. Okay, the thing is, Buster's going to think it's me. <laughs> no. C can you see? There he is. Here he comes. Buster spotted you. I don't think he's looking at me. Is he, a, is he bothered? Are you he's bothered, he knows, he knows, he knows. Come, 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 come. He's not. I'm just seeing if... He's oh, not you know. worried, Buster. Oh, is he, is he a bit excited? He's a bit bothered, but not overly. Are you, mate? Oh, yes. It's because he's been fed already. He's been this fed morning. already. So, what an anti climax. Right, yep. can you, next tomorrow, can you film on your phone and I will overlay the footage I'll try, here? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bless him. But anyway, it's not just about Buster in this tank, is it? We've also got these new diamond stingrays in here. Yep. Look at those. God, they're, I've never seen them underneath before. They look cool underneath as well. Yeah, they're the really edges. cool. Yeah, really wicked fish. I, I don't mean I haven't seen stingrays underneath before. I mean, uh, the colour pattern of uh, these guys. I don't think the, well, oh, these guys oh. are still a little bit young to know to come up onto the glass. But Oh, you're feeding. I wonder what you're doing there. Not scratching back or something. <laughs> <laughs> wicked. What else have we got in here, Matt? Uh, so there's a trio of uh, shovel nose catfish. Sorry about the reflections, guys. It's very difficult with this tank. It really, really is. But we're doing our best. There we go. There's the shovel nose. <laughs> they wasn't yes, like they're smiling enough. as well. They, they might like... come forward if I feed a little bit, to be fair. They look like happy fish, the shovel nose. Yeah. They're not aggressive? Uh, not with, not with uh, these guys, but no. if you were to try and keep them with like neons, then uh, yes. very aggressive. <laughs> oh, there's that one. There's that bad boy. That's the uh, South American. Yes, yeah, so that's a wild parrot cichlid. Wow. And you've also got a pike cichlid oh. that just came out. and <laughs> Stole just, his food. Yeah, troughed all of that. That's all gone now. A little gentle giant there, look. Yes or no? Uh, yeah, to an extent, yeah. Again, they're very territorial, so it's, yeah. If you get in his way, he won't be a big fan of it. I quite like him, look. They're so cool. But yeah, there's a pair of those. There's a trio of the pike cichlids. Um, and then there's a few other um, uh, sucker mouth catfish. So uh, Cheryl's got a panac that lives in here, which is one of the big wood-eating, or yeah, wood-eating plecos. I can't um, find him, but... There's I've... also an Adonis. You can see his oh, spiky thing. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I couldn't even make him out. I was looking for him. Let me try and get my black behind the screen. This is going to be impossible. Um, there we go. There he is. Look, he's <laughs> absolutely huge. You can't really see sense of scale there because yeah. he's actually halfway down the tank. Yeah. But uh, is that going to help? Chunk. No. No, that's not going to help. <laughs> that's not going to help. Quite a cool little top-down view. Oh, looking in here. Yeah. Got the babies, haven't we? Yep. This, Look at those. There's a little group of three in there at the moment. Oh, when we're, still too small to go in with the main lot? Yeah. Yeah, I would just... It's, they probably, the main lot probably wouldn't bother them as in aggression-wise. It would more than likely just be feeding them would be a nightmare. Oh, I see. Um, to make sure they got the adequate amount without yeah. these guys getting it, it first. This is it. They're not going to hold their own. Whereas these guys will all sort of, yeah, battle with each other to stay at the front and take the food. Whereas... The little ones will just hide at the back and it'll be really tricky to get them to feed. Mm. This, 
This tank, so when we do scape it, see, see all those reflections there. Now, what I'm gonna do is put a whole black screen from behind it, um, and then, because it's not gonna take one day, but I'll, we'll, we can set something up so it's quick to attach. I might get a black screen with some magnets. Yeah. Uh, or, or I'll use, um, I'll use fabric, yeah, weed fabric, have fabric, and then I'll double it up for thickness. Yeah. And then if I just get some magnets and we just go bang, bang, and that means that it, it'll be so much better to, oh, it'll be so much better <laughs> to, I just knocked these signs over. <laughs> so much better to do that with. We don't know what we're gonna do yet. It's not gonna be, be crazy planted because you can't really do that. No. But we wanna do something that features the top area, like a waterfall sort of section, don't this we, something like that? Yeah, we've got lots of ideas and it just depends which one works. Yeah. But that's coming up, that should be wicked. So that is the, I was gonna say reindeer tank. I don't know why. Got Christmas on the brain. <laughs> Not far off. <laughs> so that, why would I even say that? I don't know, Rudolph the Sting red Ray. Pufferfish Stingray, tank. reindeer, I guess that's where Ray, my head went. Ray, Ray, yeah, reindeer. Yeah. yeah, anyway. Down this side is the next section of fish, that are sellable fish. What would this, se this is another live bear section, isn't it? So, wow. Oh. See, it was. Oh. And then we started doing some black water stuff and some sort of soft water tetras. <laughs> and so this is why the live bearers have moved. Okay. Because we're thinking live bearers over there. Yeah. And this can then be more tetras. So this is going to be a bit of a rarer system. <laughs> okay. Because you need more shoaling fish and more tetras in the and shop. You want to keep it interesting for yourselves as much as for everyone else. Pretty much. This is it. And what does that result in? Good care. Exactly. You know, quality looking displays. Look at all of everything. Look at this. When you go to fish shops, yeah, and you see every tank, it's got a bit of rock, it's got the sand, it's got leaf litter. Where do you see that, Matt? Here. Where do you see it? Here. Main Head Aquatics, Wellington. That's actually, telling, no, Main Head Aquatics, Taunton, that's actually in Wellington. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but every single tank, look, so, hang on, it's not just there. Yep. All of them, look, they've all got wood in, they've all got a, like a, some kind of naturalistic style environment for every single fish. Yeah. You're a machine. It no, just not makes, just you. Yeah, it's, it's everyone. the whole team. Yeah, it's it makes life team. easier for us, to be unfair, because they're going to be grazing naturally off of the woods and the rocks and things like that. So, yeah, it just makes it easier for us, really. And it gives them natural hiding spaces. It probably does mean that we miss out on a few, not necessarily sales, but customers can't see everything all the time. You know, they'll come up to us and they say, have you got, I don't know, X catfish? Yeah. And we're like, yeah, you got... 20 of them over there, but it's only going to be a bit of wood or It's there. only going to be the catfish that hide in this, yeah, to be honest, though. Much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, I can show you some South American bumblebees, the ones that I've got in my tank at home. Yeah. There's about 50 of them over there, but you never see them. So I'll show you them in a minute. Okay, okay. Yeah, no, I think you showed me before. Yeah. But they are cool. They're wicked. And I nearly got them, and then I was like, well, I'm not going to see them, Matt. Yeah. They're very specific fish. But they come for out of feeding time all the time now in my tank. So oh, as they soon do? as flake food or pellet food hits the water surface, out they come. So it's quite ah. cool to see that. Um, okay. But yeah, like I say, this used to be our live bearer system. So it was all live bearers. Now that they've moved over there, we've got a lot of like wild style or wild South American fish on here. So they're all a bit more, um, a little bit rarer, a little bit more black water. For instance, there, yeah, gold yeah, tetra. Gold they're tetras. not something you see that often, is That's it? That's it, you've got the little ruby tetras. Ruby there tetras, are... I'm just about to do a setup for these myself. Yeah, they're nice. There's some little salt and pepper quarries in here, which are the other pig, well, one of the other pygmy corridor species. Oh yeah. Which are really nice. Are they juveniles or are they actually no, that size? Two, three centimetres fully grown. So yeah, slightly different to the pygmy. Um, but, but the yeah. same genus? Well, they're all Corydoras, yeah. So they're all the same. Just, I'm just uh, trying to use words genus. I hear you saying. Oh, now you've got me. Uh, yeah, they're all, the, they're all Corydoras, but they're, yeah, there's everything from pygmy. So there's three small pygmy Corydoras sort of types and that's Harbrosus, Hastatus oh, yeah. and Pygmaeus. See, um, I, know, I yeah. know all of those, in, now you're saying them. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, we've seen them, like, you've shown me later. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This is it, but yeah, so, um, but yeah, I think that system is going to evolve into a bit of like Corydoras, Blackwater, like we've got Zebra Ottos, and they're awesome, I love them. Oh yeah. So cool. I've never seen those. No, they're a bit of, again, a bit of a rarity, a bit of an oddity, but. It's I'll take the lot. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> and we've got giant Ottos down here. Giant Ottos? Yeah, so they're, they're not actually an otosynclus, they're a different species. There you go. Yeah, here's they one are on the, good size. Yeah, here's one on the wood. A rock Whoa. Sorry. Yeah. You probably can't tell the scale people watching, but it's, it is big. 
It is very big. Yeah. Yeah. So they're cool. But yeah, that's what I think the system's going to evolve into. Bleeding heart. Bleeding heart tetra. And these rainbow tetra rainbow are looking tetra. lovely. So they're essentially an emperor tetra. Yeah, I thought I was going to say look emperor with the very body emperor, shape. But they get, if you look at this male over here, this male is amazing. Oh, yeah. Um, so they get, they get gold, blues. Hence the rainbow. That's, yeah, exactly. That is showing it, isn't it? Yeah. Wow. So the males have the red eyes. Look at him. Look at his aggression. Yeah, he's just standing in the corner <laughs> giving everyone green. This is my tank. Film me. So, yeah, Everybody leave. You can tell the sexes as well because the females have got like the yellowy blue eyes, males have got the red eyes, so that's really cool. Oh, right. Okay, that's really easy. Mm. Yeah, but yeah, I, I think that's what this system is going to evolve into, to be fair. I think it's going to evolve into a like catfishy. We're a soft water area here, so it makes sense mm. to have more soft water species. Because the customers have also got the soft yeah, water. That's so. it. And, and a lot more people are now going into black water tanks because of, you know, we've got. I think, hang on, before you well, count, when we say soft water, I think you should say it's like 6.8. It's not like. Oh, yeah, it's, it's not, not like it's not, five. No. Yeah, no, it's 6.8. <laughs> but that is, you know, soft four around here. We can sometimes drop to six and a half, depending, but most of the time it's 6.8. So mm. these fish do really well here. Um, yeah. So it just makes sense. Well, look, I buy that. all of my fish from here and I'm seven, so yeah, exactly. not years old, um, <laughs> mental age. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, blueberry tetras as well, let's see. This is why I, I just love this system because it's oh, got- Oh yes. It has got mixed in with the uh, koi tuxedo Those guppies. Those are awesome. They're wicked. A little bit different. Tuxedo guppies as well are awesome. Yeah, so. they're cool as well. But yeah, so I think this system's gonna evolve into that over the next couple of weeks. Yeah. This is, at the moment, this is just the la leftover of the live bearers that are over here. We've got some female fighters at the top. Um, yeah, and some other bits and pieces that have just come in. So wow. yeah, we get them from one supplier that does nice females. We had some a little while ago, which were the koi females, and they all looked like koi males. The colors on them were amazing. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, it's better how, to get quality. How do they get on in that tank like that? All good? Absolutely fine until you drop down to about three. And um, that's where it starts. And then that's when the aggression starts. You need the big numbers. Yeah, I think, you know, personally it's four, five or more um, and you get on well. I've seen some people do well with three, but yeah, more you've got, the, the better chance you've got of them succeeding. Yeah, so more, more, more um, live bearers more over bearers. here. So this will eventually become the same as the other side. So we'll probably have a few more different wild type tetras and barbs and things like that that will fill up this half. So maybe a Blackwater-esque system. So yeah, should be quite cool. So that is that whole section done. This one along here, Matt, what, what is this? Why is, is this different? So not really, to be honest. It's, it's very similar, it's a continuation, but this is all more tropical community. So I suppose it gets to, there's a few more of the classics on here. Yeah. Um, so there's, yeah, things like X-ray Tetras and Harlequins, uh, all your neons will be at the far end more than likely. So yeah, it's a bit more of the classics, but yeah, it's still a some good rainbows. amount of tropical community fish. Got some nice rainbows there. Yeah, and we've got, got some rainbows. nice rams. Lovely rams, yeah. Golden rams, call that so bright, my camera can't even. <laughs> but then there's also things like, you'll have uh, Ooh. king tigers. Wow, Yeah. So great markings. So there's lots of things hidden on this, and obviously the Medusa pinacos that you showed on one of the other videos. Oh yeah, were yeah, on here. where's They're that gone? Just in there. Oh, I love this. So a type of bristle nose, yeah? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, they're an ancestress, so. Yeah. So they stay relatively small. Yeah, 15, 16 centimetres fully grown. Which so. is small compared to a proper plec. Yeah, 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 then a common plec that you're getting up to like two foot sort of thing, yeah. So as we go along, there's a lot of just bread and butter style sort of yeah, fish. Yeah, exactly. Then, and bread then you and just butter. dot in, don't you, the odd yeah. specialty. Like these Akaras here. They are beautiful. Wow. Oh, yeah. yes. Very, very different, this one. Really do like it. Yeah, we're hoping that's a pair in there and they might be destined for my tank at home. But <laughs> Where's the other one? There's a, another one down here, but oh, it's right. a different colour. Um, but we're hoping they've lived together now for two, uh, three or four weeks. Um, so they're doing well together. So we're hoping that they will yeah, just pair up, but That'd just be got cool. to keep an eye on them. Very, very cool fish. Yeah. But yeah, you've got you know, things like rainbow fish, more rainbow fish, lots more tetras. So you know, the Loretto tetras aren't a massive showy fish, but they're a little bit of an oddity. You don't get them too often. Um, but it's just a little bit different. You're obviously you're a mano shrimp, so you've got to have a mano shrimp. So yeah, so lots of tanks have got a mano yeah, in, haven't they? Yeah, they get everywhere. We put them everywhere just so they've got enough food, to be honest. Obviously, yeah. if you all put, you know, 150 Amanos in one tank, it's going to be hard for us to feed them. Whereas if we spread them out, it just means our feeding's a little bit easier. Yeah. Like, that's gorgeous. Little, I say little, oh, little whoa. green phantom, a bigger, bigger green phantom. Come on, guys, give me a chance. <laughs> yeah. Well, so she'll get up to probably 19, 20 centimetres fully grown. 
So she's a bit chunkier than your yeah. average bristle nose. Looks wicked just sat there. Doesn't actually look real. No, <laughs> she's, she likes that piece of wood. She sort of sits there and yeah, just chills out for a lot of the day. <laughs> um, and yeah, look, you know, your, your boys at home, Pongsloys. There we go, looking good. And the Corys, you know, we've got everything on this system. It's all just a mix of everything that you could ever want for a community aquarium. So how does a, you know, how many tanks is that, Matt? Do you know? Uh, it's 12 per bay, so it's 36 tanks. 36, and how is that filtered? So it's a bit weird in the way that it works. So all of these tanks here have a weir on them. So you can see in the corner there's a weir. Drops down into this reservoir. Let me see the weir. Yeah, so the weirs are, hang on, go that way. So a weir is like that. So the water comes in over here and down through the drain in the bottom. Okay. And then ends up dropping into this reservoir. So you've just got pipes dropping into here. Yeah. Flows through. That's why there's always fish sometimes in that grill because they've swum through from the <laughs> next tank along. Oh, but I yeah, see. Goes through this grill, through the middle here. Yeah. Into this sump. Yeah. So another one. And then this single pipe here is what the pump draws it out of there and then into our filtration system. So yeah, what you've got is essentially a large large pond filter, yeah. bank of UV sterilizers. Um, and yeah, it just goes through there, through the UV sterilizers that are all hidden behind there. Um, and then yeah, back onto the system. So everything gets sterilized before it goes back into other tanks. Where's back into, where back in the system? I can't see anything or hear anything flowing back in. Uh, so yeah, what you get is the pump actually pumps it up to the back and there's a big rail that goes along the back, a big piece of pipe work. Yeah. And each piece of pipe has loads of drill holes in it. So what you get, it's these outlets. I see. So it's not, it's all coming out of each one. Yeah. So that's why you're not getting this big rushing sound. Exactly, yeah. Because so it's, it's just trickling it, out of everywhere. Exactly, yeah. You get a nice flow out of each one, back into the system and then back around. So it's, it's essentially just like a canister filter, but just in a ma much bigger way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's a canister filter. And what it's got is it's got loads of Y pieces on it. So it splits the flow to all these different tanks. I see, I see. But yeah, it's fairly simple, fairly easy. And then we just water change it as often as we need to. Um, and yeah, keep it cleaned and dechlorinate and do what we need to do with it. The same as you would really on a normal tank, just on a much bigger scale. Mm. Mm, makes sense. Well, look how nice these rams are. Oh, yeah, the Bolivians. Bolivians. Uh, lovely. Oh, really good colours on them. And with some awesome, well, they are, I think they are, they're Colombians, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, they are yeah, Colombians, yeah. yeah. Yeah, got beautiful dorsal fins on them. Really yeah, to really tall. Up. Nice. That's it, you know, every tank on here has got something in it. Like, you can go through this system, you're like, oh, they're cool, they're cool. And yeah, then, yeah it just, you end up. You end yeah, up with 30 hours. tanks. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, that's, the, that's the bottom line, isn't it, really? <laughs> awesome. Not sure it needed to be on an angle. <laughs> <laughs> so this right here is the plant section, my favourite section. We <laughs> yep. recently set up this tank as well, didn't we, Matt? Yep. Which is doing really well. You guys are enjoying it. Some of you don't quite agree with <laughs> the idea what we've done. Anyway, I'll bring you over. Yeah, so we have got two vats, basically, haven't we, Matt? We've got... Yeah. Do you separate them? Yeah, you've got more sort of hardy yeah, by looks of it. Well, yeah, it's a bit of a weird one. So we've got normally Amazon swords, um, so Echinodurus, Anubius, and Java fern on this side. Yeah. So sort of broadly, if I suppose. Yeah. But minus crypts. <laughs> <laughs> and then on this side, it's mostly stems and sort of a little bit sort of, uh, yeah, harder, not harder to grow, but a bit more work in involved plants, I suppose. Oh, um, I like but there are a few things, you know, we've got boosties over here. We've got some plans to actually do another plant tank. Um, to give us more room, essentially. Okay. Um, but that's a little way off down the line at the moment. Yeah, there's plenty here at the moment. Oh, I mean, yeah. They're well, looking we, really um, good as well. The kessels. Obviously, the delivery comes in today. Oh, does <laughs> so it? So, we, yeah, we're, we're in theory low stock at the moment until the delivery rocks up at one o'clock. And then it will all be full up again, won't it? It will be full to the brim. The kessels really do a great job of lighting yeah. all the plants. And then, of course, centre stage is our new and at an angle um, river a tank. Yep. <laughs> So some of the people were saying, you do realise having it at an angle doesn't mean it increases the flow. Yes, <laughs> uh, we, we are aware of yeah, that. Yeah, we do realise that. <laughs> it was more just for a visual, weird, yeah, eye-catching thing, wasn't it? Just to be a bit different. And also, you know, there was the natural angle of the plant vat. So we yeah. just thought, well, we'll just follow that angle, can't we? Yeah. Um, we've got the rainbow shiners in here. And... Um, also the zebra danios yeah. and hill stream loaches as well. Literally there's a group of four of them on top of oh, this wow. rock arguing at the moment. <laughs> 
Some people are concerned about putting in um, Hillstream loaches into a new tank that isn't established because they haven't got any food. Matt, what do you say to that? Uh, that Hillstreams really aren't just algae eaters. They will eat anything. Uh, they're sort of omnivores. So we feed ours a mixture of like Daphnia, bloodworm, um, algae wafers, catfish pellets. They will generally snack on a lot of things once you get them established in the aquarium. Yeah. Look at, look at them. Yeah, can you see that little group? Yeah. They all follow each other. Maybe some mating behaviour? Yeah, or? well, the one at the back's got... Every now and again, he's showing off a bit of a hint of a blue tail. So I think he's trying to be the dominant one. Right, I see. Yes, yeah, so we've got real high flow coming out of this section. Well, not real high, but a good amount, like creating that full oxygen look in this side. And the idea was that as it got into the sort of deeper area, it's chilled out a bit more so that these guys can enjoy it. I mean, it's still really good flow for them, look. So just, just similar to what they're going to experience in one little corner of a river somewhere, yeah, or a it. fast stream, let's say. And that's why I like the angle on it, because you would have the riverbank being a little bit lower than you know, yeah. parts of the river, and it would speed up and slow down. And I think that's quite cool. I quite like that idea. The Elodia's doing well. You've already been trimming it and planting it, haven't you, Matt? <laughs> yeah, I use it as a, as a thing for telling customers how to trim stem plants. So I just, yeah, nip a bit off, replant it. And so I have replanted it quite a bit so far. Yeah, it's, it's doing well. It is, you can see, like, all that new growth is is right there, I mean, as to be expected, under two Kessels. Yeah, it's possibly one of the easiest plants to grow under two of the most expensive light units, so you'd hope it would grow. I'd expect more algae, but yeah. I suppose we've got those hill streams, haven't we? Yeah, the hill streams are going to be grazing it. There's a lot of, like, there's a few spots where they haven't got to yet that you can see a bit of algae, but it's not really that much, to be honest. It looks so good. I, I do love this. Maintenance free for you guys as well. So simple. But really does sort of Pull the eyes in to have a look. Those rainbow shiners are starting to get, if I can focus on them, no, they're <laughs> starting to get a bit more colour now. Yeah, there's a male around this side that's just starting to get a bit of blues and reds to him. Don't make me switch to manual. Okay, I have to switch to manual, hang on. There we go, now I can show the rainbow shiners. So they're getting that sort of hint of bluey to them and more red on the top. But they're, they're quite a bit off, aren't they, Matt, in terms of colour? Yeah, yeah. Once they once they settle down, you'll get a lot more of show of a colour. The coppery orange comes through in the females, and then the males will get that bright blue to them. So there's a few I can see now. There's three or four males, or two or three males actually, all showing off. So I think it won't be long before they're fully coloured up. Yeah, and there's ever Danios. Well, they looked good from the start, like yeah. fully done. Look at that, underrated Danios. They're so cool. I just love the stripes on them. Nice. Right, Matt is now going to give us some exclusive <laughs> access. To, so in, there's a whole middle section here that you can't really see into because it goes all the way around inside there. And that's the whole filtration area. And that's going to show us how this works. It filters Buster's massive tank that you can see there. And it filters all the rows of tanks and this whole section. So yeah, Matt, are we allowed in? Yeah, yeah. Oh, behind the scenes. Yeah. So yeah, what you've got, well, it's the same as the other system really. So this is the back of Buster's tank. It's a little bit mental. Yeah. <laughs> but you've got pipes running back into the tank up here. So this is the water return. Yeah. You come down. The last thing it goes through is some UV sterilizers on here or clarifiers on those ones. So they're just going to be killing off any algae, any nasties, any hopefully any parasites. But obviously not many new fish go into Buster's tank anyway. Massive great heater. Whoa. So, yep. Yeah. So that's our heater that heats Buster's tank. Bit of a beast. Um, and then down to the pump, right at the bottom. Again, whoa. <laughs> yeah, so that's pumping out uh, 26,000 litres an hour. Um, so yeah, fairly, fairly hefty on the flow. And then it's, again, it's just a big koi filter, essentially. So you've got plastic K1 media inside. Um, and yeah, it's just a pond filter, really. It's just a big pond filter. So what about the people that are going to say that's all supposed to be moving around? So that's, that's designed to be static on that one. So it's got flow. It's got, obviously, the 26,000 litres of flow going through it. It's yeah. horrendous. So you don't get very much um, sort of static or anaerobic areas in there. So it's constantly flowing through that filter. You don't need it moving. When we water change it, what yeah. you do is you've got a spider valve here. And what that spider valve does is you turn it round and it essentially blows water into here. And all that media churns around, gets rid of all the muck that's caught up in the media um, and flushes it to waste. Don't you do that once a day? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah, we, yeah. Uh, it's one of those things, you know, we probably could do it less, but I would rather do it more than yeah. not because you never know what problem you might encounter if you don't. Just look though, like, if you didn't know 
that if someone comes in here, they're like, oh, if you, yeah, you if need you, to turn off the valve. Um, yeah, um, which one? To, yeah, so you've got valves <laughs> to control flow through the UVs. You've got valves to bypass the UVs. What's that top an extra one? Extra one to go back into the tank. Uh, this one's for us to blow. Essentially, every now and again, we use an air blower to blow air into that, so it churns it up even more aggressively. Okay. Um, and that's what that one's for. So you just attach a big air pump to the top of that. And when I say big, it's chunky. Right. Um, and that blows air into that. So yeah, it's. It is a bit of a mismatch of valves and pipes and elbows. And stuff. But, like you said, it's not as complicated as no. it looks once you know... Once you know where the water goes yeah, and yeah. how it all works, it's fairly simple to get used to it. And then to this side is... We've got the nano tanks all across here, like a nano yeah. tank system. This is just all small fish and shrimp. No, the shrimp aren't on the system, actually. They've got their own independent tanks with filters, yeah. don't they? Yeah, uh, they have air-driven filters on those yeah, ones yeah. just to keep it easy. But, yeah, it's the same thing. Just a lot more pipe work on this one. So how, how come? Uh, it's just the way that it works, because it's back to back, you have to sort of mess around with it a little bit more. Bit than of what a you jigsaw, would isn't it? Bit, yeah. of a, bit of Tetris. That's it. Crikey, that everyone's got a valve. So I suppose yep. you can turn off each individual, individual drink. Yep. Oh, there's the overflow That's it. for the back. So this one works a little bit differently. That one doesn't have internal weirs, that has an external weir. So the water flows out through a hole in the back oh, yeah. and drops into an external weir which very few people use. It's just because we wanted more space in the tanks for those. I see. Oh, I see, because if you add the internal, it's going to take up way yeah, more room. it takes up way mu much more space. So that all comes down there. Yep, into the reservoir, into the pump, into the filter, and then back, back up in. into them. Yeah. And then big UV sterilizers big again. Big UV banks for sterilizers. Crikey, there's a lot going on. Yep. Um, but it's working well. Yeah, so. well, it's, it's, it's a very tried and true method. It works a treat, to be honest. Do you get any leaks? Not, oh, yeah, all the time. Yeah, it's just inevitable, unfortunately. You know, it's it's never bad, but you'll just, you know, every now and again a tap will bring a slight yeah. leak just because you've got... So I many. Know, yeah, there's probably 200, 300 taps in here. Um, yeah. So you do, you get it every now and again, but it's nothing that can't be changed. You know, you just undo them, put a new tap in, yeah. and on it goes again. Yeah. yeah, and then mop up the floor. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> So that is the whole filtration room done. Um, but this is this is our nano section. I say it ours, like yeah, yeah, yeah. It kind of is now. You're here enough. Yeah, okay. Uh, nano fish, all the nano fish, and a couple of little bigger ones there, like these rice fish. I think. Yep, they are. Yeah. Well, they're, they're a variable lamp eye, but yeah, they're they look more rice fish. They look really good. They're really cool. Really um, cool. Yeah, so we've got all sorts in here. Like, if you've got a nano tank, this is the section to come, isn't it, Matt? Yeah, it's a little bit sparse at the moment. We've got more deliveries coming in over the next couple of weeks. But we, yeah, we keep everything from like, you know, green neons, little mosquito rasboras or chili oh, yeah. rasboras in there, which are awesome. Um, Ember tetras are a big favourite of a lot of people. You know, that's probably the one yeah, you that get so most much people pop, go for. You, you, you know, so we've pop. even got um, under this rock. Oh, loads of coolie loaches. Yeah. <laughs> and they're gone. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, everything on here, you know, nice little rice fish in there. Got some of the daisies, blue rice fish at the top, actually. They're lovely. Oh, Just yeah. starting to colour up now. There was one holding eggs in there the other day. Yeah, I don't think those legs... Eggs? Legs? Legs. <laughs> I don't think those they eggs are going to last. Legs. They don't have legs, no. no. Those new leg fish. Yes, that's it. Do you mean an axolotl? That's <laughs> yeah, not a fish. <laughs> it's not a fish. Um, I do like... Everyone likes... The Celestial Pearl Danio, yeah, also are. known as a Galaxy Respora. That's it, yeah. Everyone's a real big favourite of them. They're possibly going to be another... I'm going to possibly do a tank for them. I can't work it out yet. Yeah, I think you should. Yeah, I, think I really great. like them. But yeah, some nice little uh, smaller rainbow fish. So they're a uh, Pacific Blue Eye rainbow fish. So the males will go like a yellow with that black and white on the dorsal fin and then bright blue eyes to them. So they're really nice. Nice. Yeah. Some more... Um, yeah, the, Some more uh, rice fish. Yeah, the, um, I can never more sell them. Variety. Yeah, they are. And a few different rainbows and stuff in there. The shrimp tanks, unfortunately, haven't got many shrimp in them at the moment because we are between deliveries. Shrimp, shrimp, shrimp. 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 Yeah, you've got some uh, some rillies up in there. Yeah, um, and ram's horns you and do as well. And ram's horns, yeah. We've yeah. always got the ram's horns kicking about because they're great algae eaters. Um, but yeah, there's always all sorts of little bits and pieces. And there's sometimes, you know, it's worth looking in because we'll have three or four species. So sometimes there'll be like sparkling garamis in there with them. Yeah. But because there's three or four types of shoaling fish in with them, you don't see the sparkling garamis. No. You sort of ignore them and you see all these fish buzzing around, but there's actually a group of something living in the rock work. So it's always worth looking through and seeing if you can see other bits and pieces hiding. But I, I suppose that goes for the rest of the shop as well, to be fair. Yeah. There's exactly. always stuff hiding around in tanks. Yeah. 
And then next to this section, we've got uh, one of the tanks that we set up quite a while ago now for yeah. the uh, tequila split fins, wasn't it? That's it, yeah, yeah. So the adults, they've all gone back to the zoo yeah. and we've just got like a new sort of colony of the babies that they laid growing yeah, that's through. It. Yeah, so we'll grow them up. We'll let a load of the babies come through. I think there's eight or eight or so babies in here at the moment. Um, and they'll come And that through. lamp eye that's and jumped. That lamp eye that got in here somehow. <laughs> He's jumped from that tank there, yeah. look. That's quite the leap. That's it. Doosh. We must have left the lid off, but yeah, he has literally hopped across there, so we need to catch him out. Loads um, of cherry shrimp as well. Yeah, the cherry shrimp have actually bred quite well in there, so there's actually really? quite a few of them. Um, I reckon yeah. it's all the rock. Yeah. It's good for yeah. the shells and everything, and yeah. Yeah, it works really well. Awesome. So yeah, behind us, my second favorite section <laughs> after the plants, the hard, the hardscape section. So yep. we've got loads of different varieties of wood. Um, you've got some more coming in as well, haven't you, Matt? Yeah, there's a They're delivery selling out constantly. today at some point. Yeah. yeah, I constantly, the problem is you see something new or you see something different and instantly I'm like, oh yeah, I'll get a box of that. Yeah, I'll get yeah. a box of that in. Because it, it does, it does really well. You're always getting sort of new types in that, aren't you? Yeah, giving I try, them a try to. I try to keep it different. So yeah, you've got like the structure wood, you've got this new honeycomb wood, which is quite cool, or millennium wood, I think some people call yeah, it. Yeah, it's um, like dragonstone, but in wood form. Yeah, pretty much. We had a customer actually buying a load of this and dragonstone to do a skate between the two. Oh, makes sense. Yeah, makes I sense. think that could look quite cool. I think that's yeah, working. Yeah. But yeah, so um, yeah, and then we've got, no, you know, normal bits of driftwood and bits and pieces that you can sort of build up. And then all the rocks and stuff on the bottom. Yeah, we do all the um, rock work across the bottom. Unfortunately, you can't do anything higher. We're hoping to increase this area again because it's been so popular. Yeah. We're hoping to increase it slowly into... Why do you reckon it's been more popular, Matt? Well, I don't know. No, Some yeah. idiot coming in all the time and making tanks using all your stuff. Pretty much, yeah, probably, <laughs> probably. Oh, and then, yeah, we've got... Oh, I love this section. See, Matt's got some other non-common sort of stands in yep. um, that, that mimic certain locations i guess yeah yeah it just gives you a little bit more of a variance to try different um biotope looks i suppose yeah. aquascape looks you know it is it's, it's all very well doing the standard sands but you do need something different every now and again yeah exactly and then again a little more, more ver uh, different rocks these yep. are a little, not your normal sort of stuff you're going to see in aquascaping shops is it um the, yeah i the, haven't anyway like no some people like it it's just it depends on your aquascape you're doing these aren't as popular um, normally these are the sort of, yeah, the ones that don't, people don't use in aquascapes, but we have had some customers do some really wicked aquascapes with them, so. Well, we tend to always come here because we always want these rounded yeah, ones, Yeah, we want don't the big we? pebbles, yeah, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> I've got to, I've got to get some more big pebbles in. Yeah. And then we've got all the different spider yeah, wood spider, sort of stuff. spider, vine woody sort of stuff. So yeah. yeah, you've got finger root in there, all sorts of different types like that. That's a bit of a, Ooh, it's a bit that, of a hard look at that one. Lot. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of a hard one to show off, to be honest. We, I know what you mean. This is our, our plan is to get more shelving in this corner yeah. so we can then space all the vine wood out um, yep. and make it easier to shop because it is a hassle to shop. And then boom, look at this, the giant pieces <laughs> here as well. You can't even pick that up. Whoa, that. that's an absolute monster. Yeah. And then yeah, moving around, we've got more monsters. even more monsters, like bigger pieces on the top. And then what Matt does is really good here, rather than selling you 10 kilograms of like a, a gravel you yeah. don't need, yeah. we've got scoops so you can help yourself to the amount you want then it's weighed in kilograms as to how much you need yeah what we tend to use this for is the edging so the scatter gravel don't we matt yep this and is um it. you have a base sand and use this around all the sort of bigger rocks and you tend to get a really nice result so we've got completely different colors well not completely different here but that you know i think this is matt's most popular so yeah. he just has two of those yeah slightly darker variation but yeah it's really nice for people to be able to come pick a mix it's yeah, pick a mix gravel pretty much it you know customers you do not need 10 to 20 kilos of gravel that you're just going to use what 100 grams of 200 grams of yeah so yeah lots of people actually this you know i've only just filled these up a couple of days ago so by the end of the weekend they empty themselves quite quickly <laughs> they're ridiculous really and that leads on nicely too. Look at this. It's almost like we've planned this tour. Oh, it's like it, it almost <laughs> works and it's yeah. almost fluid. Let me come around there. You want to come around that way? Yeah, it almost worked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we should have been the other way around. So this was the discus blackwater tank that we set up three, four months ago now? Something like Something that, like yeah. That. It's been a while now. But look, oh, the discus are much bigger than when we put them in now. Yeah. Look at this beauty here. That's a specimen and a half. Yeah, he's lush. And that well, they all are. Yeah, they're looking that really good. That one there looks really good. And the Bolivian rams have come on yes, really nicely as well. I did see them well. really good. You know, they are, like when they hit in this lighting, they just look so good. And the extended fins yeah. as well for the males and that. Oh, they look so good. Yeah, settling in well. And um, then you've got the gold tetras in the back. So they lurk in amongst the root, which is really cool. They just like 
sort of gravitate towards that area. Yeah, and then we've got those Corys coming through the middle. Yes, yeah, so we had two species shell. of Cory, didn't we? We yeah. had the uh, Venezuelans and I can't remember what the other one was that went in here. Napoensis, maybe? It was one of the smaller species that went in. Yeah, yeah, them. I can't remember either. Yeah, they were striking and spotty. Um, and then there's whiptail catfish. There is. Now, the whiptails are a nightmare to spot because they generally live on the wood. So you can <laughs> see, actually, you can see the ottos. So yeah. you see two ottos lined up on the wood there. It's a bit dark back there. But the whiptails sit on the wood most of the time and they blend in with the twiggy wood really, really well. I'm scanning, but I, I think the chances... If you can't see them, I definitely can't because you're really good at finding. Yeah, I had a good video of one the other day. Um, where are they? No, no, they don't want to be out today. They could be right in amongst the leaf litter oh, for all there you. There you go. Oh, There's one on the sand, there actually. We go. Oh yeah. See, that's the problem though. You look for them, and it just looks like a twig or a stick that sat on the floor. Yeah. I actually scanned over him a couple of times before I spotted him. Because he does look like something that's just fallen down there. Yeah. <laughs> nice. But yeah, so this is a, this is this is like an all-in-one system. This tank, isn't it, Matt? So yes. it's got we've got floating plants at the top. Lots you're going to ask. This is a peace lily that you're seeing here. Yeah. Which and is a bit of Monstera mixed oh, yeah, in. Oh, yeah, or Monstera. Um, yeah, Pothos maybe, I don't know. No, it is Monstera, it is Monstera, Monstera yeah. yeah. It's just these baby leaves rather than the big adult yeah. ones. Um, the uh, root system, look, just sat in there like a ball of it. And then it's like the, the bulk of, of, the, of the actual plants is just out of the water. It can be submerged a little bit. You don't, it, I used to think that you couldn't submerge it, it would rot, but that's not the case at all because I've got one at home it's right under in the water and it's absolutely fine. So they're really resilient to water. But look at that, it just adds a real element of sort of naturalness to it, having all those uh, roots and that coming in with the, the twigs. I don't know, it makes it like even more rooty. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Proper edge of a riverbank sort of thing. That's Definitely. yeah, just grown into the tank. That's quite cool actually, one of our lotus seeds. So these are lotus pods. Yeah. And one of the seeds fell out and has actually shot and it started growing. The ram's horns are currently trying to tackle it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so we'll see what he grows into. I might yeah, move him a little bit later. Save and, it. Save yeah. it from the ram's horns. Yeah. Must they haven't. I was worried they were going to eat it because I saw them on it yesterday. And I don't know what they're eating off of it, but they don't attack the plant. They are just eating something off of the seeds. So strange, isn't it? I guess as the seed's degrading, they're eating some of there's, the stuff. That's there's something attracting them because they've got that whole tank there to choose from yeah. <laughs> material yeah. that's breaking down. And there's five or six and, of them. And they're all going for that. Yeah. yeah odd. Odd. But yeah, tank's going successfully. The fish are growing nicely. It's got a sump system in the bottom. Yep. There we go. So the weir just at the back there overflows, all comes down to the back, goes through all these different bits and bobs, and then the water gets pumped back up again. So this is the first one I've ever done that was a sump system. Yep. Learned quite a bit from that one. Um, all, the, all the tanks we're showing you have got build videos, by the way, guys, so if you want to see them. And um, yeah, it, it shows full detail how we did all of it. This isn't as actually as dark as I'm seeing here. The camera, hang on, let me go there. And then it makes that side go extra bright. <laughs> if you go there, it makes that side go extra dark. You can't win. No, can't, that big clump of floating plant in the middle there yeah. is just uh, Never mind. causing a bit of grief. We get the idea anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the whole hardscape section. If we swing this way, we've got a little display of some of the tanks. Uh, we've got the scape here, yep. hell of a good deal, isn't they? Yeah, I think, great. anyway. We're at light unit, hang on the back filter. You even get two bottles of fertiliser with it. Um, I mean, you can't go wrong with that. No, you really can't. Really for good a, prices yeah, as well. Normal tank. And they're Opti as well, by the looks of yeah. If you look at the colour of yeah, the glass. Are. Yeah, Opti white glass, comes with filter, comes with light. And the lights are good as well. Look at yeah. these lights. So the price per day, 22 pence a day. That's 89 quid, 90 pound. It's got the filter, it's got the light, and it comes with fertiliser and everything. I mean, you can't really yeah. go wrong with that, can you? And that's you? the thing, when you're looking at the cost today, loads of people are worried about the energy crisis and everything like that. But when you look at the cost today, 22 pence per day. So over the week, it's costing you like, you know, just under a couple of quid. It's all good. But like, yeah, if you don't buy a coffee, you get to run your tank for a week. Yeah. I'm, I want the tank every day. Yeah. <laughs> and then we come around, this is the discus section. Yep. So we've got, yeah, a discus at the top. We've got a new delivery that have just come in, or well, not just come in, but they've got to be moved up now because so we've got all the little ins living down the bottom. Um, so they'll all be split back up into their colour forms and moved back up to the top. Um, and yeah, you've got all the different colour forms. We're a bit low on them. Obviously, the new delivery hasn't been moved up yet. Um, but in each of these tanks as well, we do different things. So when you look down the bottom, you've got golden vampires hidden in the back, and a bristlenose. Um, golden vampires, and you've got oh, some yeah. little porthole catfish. 
Ones that go okay with discus, yeah, yeah basically. Yeah, we try to keep it so that it is, yeah, it's um, compatible, I suppose you would say. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Venezuelan orange, Corydoras, and bits and pieces like that. Oh, yeah. And are these, are these some that someone's brought in? Yeah, customer, I think, I can't remember if the customer's tank went wrong or it broke or something, so they've been only in for a few days. So we're just fattening them back up and making sure they're all healthy and safe to go. And then we'll find a new little home for them eventually. Yeah. Yeah, now that we've come to the front, look, everyone's come up and woken up in the bottom. <laughs> everyone's like, are you feeding us? <laughs> Not just yet. Yeah. Um, and then, oh, these are nice colour. Yeah, so some uh, what look like pigeon bloods. I think Martin's just doing the labels for these now. So, yeah, some nice little pigeon bloods. Um, some nice wild Danny's colours. plants that have been Danny's sat there plants, forever. Yeah, Danny shut down his tank and moved house. So there, he, I think he's getting ready to... Nice boost. It's a beautiful boost, isn't it? <laughs> but yeah, I think he's getting ready to reuse it soon, hopefully. Yeah. And then a few more at the top. Yeah, a few wildies and a few... And then lots of different koi. That's, they're not koi, koi's, are they? No, they're brockus. Yeah, so you remember this now. Yeah, Corydorus XL. <laughs> yeah, the big old heads and mouths left. That's it. So there's, <laughs> I think there's three or four species of uh, brockus that are actually sort of, yeah, designated species. So, yeah, they're one of them. That's uh, what looks like Splendens. And then we've got some nice Miguelito Corydorus or Virginiaes. Nice. And yeah, it's really cool. I love this little guy that's at the front. Some cool colours on him. And then next to them, we've got um, we've got the Sturbys. Yep, Sturbys, yeah. Awesome, which goes so well with discus. Yeah. They like the higher temperatures and they seem to thrive. They do, they awesome. do really well. So next to that section, Matt's got a whole huge corner, giant nets, <laughs> uh, a whole huge corner dedicated to ponds. I mean, you're, it's, it's another one of your specialties in it, Matt. Yep. You worked with ponds for many, yeah. a few yeah, years, didn't years you? Yeah, years and years. Yeah, I love ponds. They're one of my big sort of things in the shop. So, yeah, we've got everything from filters to pumps to air pumps and big oh, skimmers. and Basically everything from a Waze yeah, in yeah, this pretty section. Much. Um, and then, so much to choose from, look. Oh, yeah. They so do. it suits every size tank, yeah? Pond. Uh, pond. Yeah. pond. <laughs> so, I'm so used to saying tank. That's it, yeah. Well, we've got to get you into ponds. That's the next eventually, thing, I reckon. Eventually. Yeah, that's the next thing. Aquascaping some ponds, I reckon we're, I reckon we're good for that. That would be cool. Yeah. But yeah, and then we've got yeah, everything from Awazi. And then we do Blagden as well. Um, so two of the main brands, really. Okay. And then there's tons and tons of food to choose yeah. from as well. Like, Loads I think you're covered food. for food. Yeah, if, that's it. <laughs> and then treatments pond. as well, just yeah. in case oh, you have any ailments or algaes or anything like that. And then pond... Uh, Accessories like the fittings and yeah, stuff, isn't it? For all the different fittings. Exactly, pipe works and bits and pieces. So, so yeah. you're covered for your pond needs. Come here. Yeah, pretty What's much. This? Oh, like little displays of how the yeah, different how the filters, filters work, work and everything like that. Or not? No, no. It's just yeah. That's the locking. That's the lid that comes off, so you can put treatment down in there. So oh, right, okay. someone had done done it halfway. Yeah, Someone cool messing filters. about, probably a kid messing about with it, wasn't it? Yeah, or one of the staff, or me. Well, yeah, nice. <laughs> just like when you're on the phone. Just yeah, I just play with it, and then yeah, that's it. Yeah. Okay, and then we're almost right back at the start because there is the eight foot. We've just got one more row to go, and that is this row here. So, what would you describe this row as, Matt? Um, I would describe this as medium to large community fish. I suppose would be the easiest way to describe it. There are a few sort of slightly angrier fish in amongst them. <laughs> but yeah, the good majority of them are gonna be your uh, 10 centimeter plus, yeah, community, medium to large community fish. So things like angel fish. Um, some nice angels of, down here. Yeah, right? a lot of rainbow fish. So they're like spotted, um, which are really cool. They're like a wild variant. So they'll be really, really nice. It keeps focusing on the glass. Get off. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, and then Red back angels. Red back. Yep, so they're a wild strain as well. They're a redback Manakapuru. Nice. Um, but yeah, you've got some big melon, well, they're not big yet, but melon barbs that will get up to sort of a 15, 16 centimetres fully grown. Bosmani rainbows, obviously you got, you've got them at home. Nice. I'm already in the studio now, actually, sorry. Um, yeah, and then there's some sort of medium cichlids as well. So we've got like the topaz. They don't look much at the moment, but these little guys get bright blue eyes and then some real nice colours to them as they get older. But they're going to get 10, 15 centimetres. Um, so it's just all the bigger, sort of slightly angrier fish over here. Right. And then what's going on with this one? Uh, a little bit leaky. Should I skip over that one? No, it's all right. It just leaked, unfortunately. The seams go every now and again. And, just needs yeah. redoing. Re yeah, so we've drained, we've got to drain it down properly, get in there, get all the silicone out and reseal it. It's just part and parcel of what we do in here, to be fair. And it's one of those jobs that's at the back back of the list yeah, of priorities. It's, it's when you get time, to be honest. Yeah, it's exactly. just one of those things, you know, you, you haven't got idiot YouTubers in here. Yeah, I know, causing me grief. Taking up the day. Yeah, that's it. There is actually some cool catfish hiding up the top here. Yeah. So we've got, 
I think there's some cynodontis in it, but there's a, um, a large cactus placo in here as well, if I can. That's him. He's going to go to the back, isn't he? Of course. Here Whoa. He oh, yeah. Yeah, he is cool. There he is. So, yeah, they end up really spiky. You can sort of see the spikes down wicked. through the side of his body. Um, but, yeah, they're like a, an extra large catfish. So we keep a few of them over here oh, as well. Oh, brilliant. It's come right to the front. Yeah. Nice. It's so, basically a dinosaur. Yeah, pretty much. It's an yeah. underwater dinosaur. Yeah, they get like 25, 30 centimetres fully grown, so they're quite a Spiky. chunky yeah. Um, yeah. But, yeah, we keep them over here. Obviously, the Kyberzi Tetra, so they get a little bit bigger and a little bit more angry. So they're the ones that I put in my um, Tetra yeah, tank at home. Yeah, the red spots. Yeah. yeah, Denison barbs. It's all the bigger sort of... Yeah, fish that if customers have got a five, six foot tank, yeah. but they want still a community of fish that are a little bit larger, then this works out fine. You know, tiger barbs, again, like they're just a little bit bigger, a little bit more angry than what you would mix in with your, you know, green neons and your nano fish, really. And obviously severums as well. Yeah, some beautiful red severums up there. So they're... Severums are quite chill though, aren't they? Normally, yeah. If you, um, if you keep them with Compared sort of... to some others. Yeah, yeah. You know, some of the cichlids. The, that's the problem with the word cichlid. Is cichlid is everything from an apisto that's, you know, tiny and fairly peaceful for what it is, all the way up to like something that grows... What's the biggest one? Probably about a metre. Um, really? And yeah, it's really angry and will eat anything in sight. Would that be South America? Uh, no, I think... Uh, yeah, it's, it's essentially there's an emperor cichlid. Um, they come from Lake Tanganyika and they do get to about a metre. Um, oh. Yeah, and they are, I've seen videos of them picking up turtles and like swimming off with the turtle to get it out of its <laughs> like breeding area essentially. So yeah, they are, I think, the biggest cichlid in the world. Wow. But yeah, everything from a shell dweller or a pisto that's tiny all the way up to that. So the word cichlid is, yeah, it's, it's a bit of a tricky one to use as one umbrella. Yeah, to, yeah, 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 judge all fish by. So that is the end of the tour. Massive tour. It's gone on for ages. <laughs> it's the sort of one you can just stick on, I guess, and maybe a bit in the background. I don't yeah, know. It's a lot of change to it. We yeah. just thought we'd go into full detail for you and show you everything rather than here's that section, here's that section, you know. A bit more in depth, that's all. So hopefully you've enjoyed it. Did you it, enjoy, I enjoyed I doing enjoyed it? I enjoyed it, yeah. It, it could be worse. Well, we could have gone tank by tank. Ooh. That'd be like four hours. Yeah, maybe that's it. If you want to see a tank by tank <laughs> tour, drop that in the comments. If there's yeah. enough people, then we'll just do it. Yeah, like, yeah. Literally we'll tank. Did we kind of? No, we didn't. No, no. no we, we could go through each individual sales tank. You know, this catfish, that catfish. This you, this and you could sit and talk about every single one of them forever, couldn't yeah, you? Yeah, that's it. We'll do that. Not me. I'll just ask the questions. Yeah. <laughs> like the dumb questions. Where did one from? <laughs> okay. Uh, thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Oh. We're all playing with. What the was scanner. that massive beep? <laughs> and then you did it anyway. Cheryl done it on purpose. <laughs> I can't believe it, you jokers, you. <laughs>